I like sucking, but I ain't gay. Legit fat podcast. Fuck those monkeys. Welcome back to Legit Bat. I didn't say it. He said it. Uh, I'm Joe. Jen's here. Ben is not here tonight. And we have, so we were doing a a regular Thursday show with Nate and Thomas over there from Paranoid American and Reality Czars. And uh, Mitch wanted to come, Mitch the Orgone donor wanted to come up and uh, get on before next Wednesday because there's this weird thing going on that I'm sure he'll describe. So he sent me a message the other day. So we just invited everybody to come on. Let's talk about this shit. Um, Mitch had some really interesting ideas he sent over and uh, we want to get to some of those. So before we get going though, uh, Nate and Thomas, uh, introduce yourselves real quick in your show. All right. Uh, I'm Nate. Uh, we have a show called The Reality Czars. Uh, we are an off cut. We make all kinds of dick jokes and talk about Sasquatch. We talk about anything, and everything paranormal. We just were talking with an oh, awesome dude. Shout out to Raven's Watch. We just talked to him. We talked about for like an hour and a half about Lilith and uh, all kinds of sexy, wonderful succubuses and fun stuff. So we talk about anything and everything. We talk about parapolitics. We talk about all the fun stuff. Uh, so come Bonner. check out. Uh, realitiesars at gmail.com if you want to send me all your dick pics, love mail, hate mail, all the fun stuff. Balls. Balls <laughs> yeah. or dicks. Balls or dicks. And th- Thomas, <laughs> tell us about what you do. If you're going to send me a dick pic, send me a good one. All right. I, yeah. If you have a, if your dick is smaller than five inches, I'm not interested. Or do something funny with it. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Put it in a hot dog bun. Mm-hmm. But it has hot to be fully bun, erect. Draw like a little face, a little wig. Just like do something. Do something fun. Just not Put googly just... eyes on it. I'm getting a size resting. queen right now, like I am. I'm fucking hating, but at least show me a big fat hog. If you're gonna say <laughs> Don't waste my time. Yeah, well, yeah, don't waste my fucking time. Make me feel right. bad about myself if you're gonna do something. <laughs> Pretend it's like Tinder. Make it count, guys. <laughs> and I am the Paranoid American. You can find me on paranoidamerican.com. I've been self-publishing books and comics and art and we're getting into all sorts of stuff. I'll just mention I've got a video game coming out later this year. But uh, instead of talking about that, we'll just uh, check me out at ParanoidAmerican.com and you can follow along there. Nice. And I can vouch for that. I have one of his uh, comics and it is very well done. It's uh, amazing stuff. And if you're into, uh, you know, the genre of things we talk about, you'll definitely love it. <laughs> this, is my, this is one of my favorites is the MK Ultra comic that breaks down the entire concept of MK Ultra from Project Paperclip all the way to modern day. Bluebird uh, talks about Stargate. It talks about all of the factual elements of the MK Ultra program. So check this guy nice. out. And It'll... bonus, it looks like a uh, Christian uh, tract that people would hand it out. You can yeah. keep it in your pocket so you can carry it around with you if you need references and see something out of the Leave it as a tip at a restaurant. You can do all kinds of stuff with them. That's, that's exactly what it says on the back page, actually. Uh... So here's all the places you can... <laughs> You can do it. Gas pumps, ATM machines, laundromats, back seat of your lift, library books. Back everywhere. of the toilet. Yeah. That's right back of the toilet. That's right. That's actually where I found my first chick track. <laughs> yeah. Perfect poop reading. MK Ultra. And uh last but not least, uh Mitch, the Orgone donor. We've had him on before. I'm sure everyone's familiar with him. Um we'll just let you kick this off because you had, like I said, he had some great ideas he sent me. So do you want to start with the next Wednesday thing or uh some of those sure, other so- ideas? Yeah, as long as I'm not high, I, like I said, I just I uh, didn't want to hijack anything. I uh, Since the last time we talked, obviously, I mean, everyone's been busy with their thing. My thing here in Arizona, for anyone that doesn't know, I'm the weirdo who's out busting towers with Organite. Uh, I drive around the desert. I prove deserts aren't natural. There's a frequency fence. I'm the frequency fence guy, and I just bust shit up because, uh, like, people are probably familiar with, they've heard me talk about earth pipes and tower busters and all that crap. Um but I've had a lot of questions lately about this. A lot of people freaking out, especially since Maui and all that uh, can of worms. But um, they're worried about October 4th uh, because there's a frequency based thing going on for those that are not awake uh, to daily life. There's the emergency broadcast system. I get that it's something's going on with the emergency broadcast system that happened back in 2018. Um, I know some people say, oh, it happens every few years, whatever. It didn't change significantly as far as what was 
the, the mechanics of it uh, until Donald Trump. So they say it was Donald Trump, but I mean, whatever, it's a presidential alert and orange man bad was in charge the last time. Now we get the pedo robot, but um, basically there is an emergency broadcast that's going to go through to everybody's phones. Um, anyone who has, I, I, I would assume it's anyone with a SIM card that can accept anything from the data network, uh, the TV, everything is going to have this, this broadcasted frequency. And of course it's scaring the shit out of a lot of people. Um, and I know right now a lot of people are covering their houses in blue tarps and worried about oh space lasers. And I listen to your guys' show on that and I love to comment on that at some point in the next hour. Uh, but in regards to the um, the October 4th, people have been asking like, well, what, what do I do? What do I do? Because it's like they think it's this frequency that needs to be broken or it needs to be busted in the same way like when they hear me talking about the cell towers and shit. And I don't know that it needs to be like that. So anyway, what prompted me to talk to you guys, just if you know, let's shoehorn it in before Wednesday, is that if anybody's interested, um, a few of the things I'm doing, I'll just jump into that. Uh, so like, there are a couple of protocols. Everybody's probably heard me talk. If you've listened to my channel, or whatever, I talk about the chemtrail detox bath and people are like, well, what does that have to do with anything? Essentially, you're just, uh, it's like grounding to the 10th degree and, and cleaning out uh, potential critters, uh, nano type stuff. If you lean that way, it's the idea of cleaning up the body the, to the best of your ability and just uh, getting rid of built up ionization because everything's electrified and we're zapped to high hell. That's and, probably and a good idea just in general anyway. Right? Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I would, I do it like once to twice a month and I am one of those people, like I'll tell somebody, Oh, you take a, you take this bath with these certain ingredients inside and you should do it for 10 minutes uh, a month or whatever and soak whatever. And I'll do it for like three hours, uh, six times a month. I mean, like I always do it more than I tell other people to do it just because I'm, an, I always experiment on stuff myself. And so, um, but the, the protocol essentially it's, um, it's a mixture of Epsom salt, borax and baking soda. Um, hmm. it used to include hydrogen peroxide. I know that gets kind of sketchy. I actually have an ozone machine. I actually ozone my bath. Um, and you can soak use peroxide oxy. to bleach your butthole too. You can oh, also, well, and in Jen's case, you could do some serious damage to certain areas that you do not want to. Yeah, no, I don't recommend that. Um, but basically I would say, you know, throw a couple or throw like three or four cups of Epsom salt in a bath, throw a couple of cups, uh, worth of borax powder into a bath and maybe like half a box of baking soda. Don't, don't add the whole baking soda. It's too basic. It, it'll hurt your skin if you add the whole box, but you just soak in it and, um, get an exfoliating whatever and scrub the shit out of your body, you know, do something that's like therapeutic. Like it should be relaxing. It should be hot and open your pores. Yeah, light a candle, thing. put some music on. But it. I, yeah. but the first time somebody recommended doing it, I don't do the music, but the reason I got into it was actually because of Robert Phoenix. And I, I forget who knows who of what and where, but it, I, you guys might've even interviewed him and I'm sorry if I forgot, but Robert Phoenix had talked about this protocol he did. So I modified it for myself and the same thing that he had talked about happening to him and happened to me. And that was the first, it was only the first time I ever did it, but you could see on the top of the water, um, what appeared to be, it was like unexplainable. Like it wasn't hair. It was like fibrous something. And people will say, Oh, it was the nanos and the Morgellons. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I, I, we jumped to way too many conclusions and then we cover our houses in blue tarps. All you can say but is that it was something. Yes. It was something. It was something. And it was something that looked like it was um, coagulating or I guess in the, it was getting, going back together, like putting itself back together on Gross. top of the water, like magnetically. So it was enough to scare the fucking shit out of me. And I recommended it to everybody I knew. I was like, um, there might be a there there. So like, but it only ever it happened the first time and then my other half uh did it as well and the same thing happened so Weird. it's something to look at but it basically yeah borax uh is is has been shown like people use borax to remove fluoride from their body there's also something about uh radiation in borax i i'm something i've been trying to figure out over the last few years there's a borax nuclear power plant i believe in idaho um and there's something about the boron element that is really good for detoxifying the body as well as like electricity. And that's, I don't know enough about it to like open up that door, 
but I just know it's enough that I experiment with that stuff. And so yeah, borax, Epsom salt, baking soda, all these things are good for you anyway, as far as like any type of exfoliate. And you'll find those same ingredients minus the borax, you'll find all the other ingredients in all kinds of products people use all the time as far as like dermatology stuff. So uh, yeah, that's bath bombs. Exactly. So that's one of the things I'm doing. Um, and then I also got into fasting uh, and I learned about autophagy. So I'm forcing myself into autophagy uh, by basically doing a 24 hour dry fast followed by two additional days of regular fasting, which just means no food and no, uh, but dry fasting means no liquid, no water. You know, mm. you can rinse your, you rinse your mouth. I did, I've done it a few times and it's insane how quickly your body goes into ketosis and you start like burning fat. And I just, I got really into that this summer. I actually lost 30 pounds, but, um, wow. It's, wow. it's what insane. What is autophagy? Autophagy is, uh, I don't know enough about it. The simplest, as far as to explain it from a scientific standpoint, but the simplest explanation is that after you, your body enters ketosis and all you have to live on is fat, uh, or the fat cells as fuel then after a while, your body will eventually, it's seeking out so much stuff for survival that it will begin to use damaged proteins and it will use like damaged blood cells, cancer cells. Your body basically will eat cancer that you have growing inside of you. I mean, it's like, there are a lot of doctors and I mean, I'm not a doctor, so I can't make certain claims, but there are, you will easily find doctors when you look into autophagy and fasting that will recommend that you fast when you're taking chemo, if you're taking chemotherapy or if you're doing any kind of cancer treatment and that the worst thing you can do when you're ill is basically to eat, uh, as well as in some cases to drink. So they're like, get plenty of fluids. Well, what happens is your body uh, we have all the water in us. And supposedly, this is the explanation I got, is that by cutting that source, and of course, this is, we're talking 24 to 72 hours. I don't, I would never recommend anything beyond that. But your uh, cells that have fat and water stored in them will begin to, be, they'll be used to power your body. So all these cells rupture and they get carried through, like your stem cell, uh, stem cell production goes up your cells rejuvenate all the like leftover dead and dying parts of your body get just used up as fuel and all of the water trapped in your body ends up going to hydrate you. So your body goes into like full blown fat burning mode and like you burn. It's really bizarre because they said when I was researching it, that the first place you'll lose fat is around your kidneys and your liver, you'll lose organ fat. So like visceral fat, that's like the biggest problem. And it's true. And it, I mean, and I, do I mean, that's a whole last disease, it's, right? The fatty liver disease or. Well, everyone, I supposedly everyone, I mean, I, I'm a fan of the sauce myself. And so everyone has an issue with their, uh, liver, uh, also just because of the, we're poisoned everywhere you look, you're poisoned. So, oh, yeah. um, putting just your breathing. Body, exactly. The air, the water, the food, everything. So putting yourself in that, um, for the sake of this conversation and throwing it out quickly, just. It, throwing yourself into ketosis and autophagy. Um, a lot of people will fast for three days. That's just water and maybe a few electrolytes, like a non-sugar, no sugar, obviously, because you want to burn out your glucose, you burn out all this glycogen reserve, and then you're just on fat burn mode. And all you do is just burn fat. And in three days, you can crank down 10 pounds and it's not 10 pounds of water weight. It's 10 pounds of fat because you have nothing to burn besides the fat. And it starts with all the fat around those areas that like, I mean, my liver, uh, fatty liver tissue improved, like in 72 hours, it's like you lose 10 years of damage on your liver. It's okay. insane. So look at, yeah, just look up autophagy. It's A-U-T-O-P-H-A-G-Y autophagy or autophagy. autophagy. It looks like autophagy. I, for the longest time, I was like, what the hell is autophagy? And people are like, first of all, you're an idiot. <laughs> Secondly, it's autophagy. And so- <laughs> So those are two things, the protocol with the bath and then the autophagy, just because the detox, it puts your body like weirdly enough, by the end of a third day, you have a shit ton of energy because all you're going like, and I learned about food and, and how we're all addicted to food. Like it, it was crazy to learn how much I reach for food when I'm not hungry and how much I reach for drink when I'm not thirsty. And all my friends who have been doing this as well, like we compare notes and it's just it's disturbing how addicted we are and how food is an addiction in itself. But um, yeah, it just puts you, it puts your body into powerhouse mode and it rejuvenates all your cells and it just fixes all these broken parts of your body. 
and you actually create like, cause people say you're losing minerals, your bones will die or whatever. No, if anything, they're stronger when this is done. It's just look up. I mean, autophagy. It, makes kind of, it kind of makes sense oh. though, because if you're taking your body's energy away from digesting and pooping mm-hmm. and all that stuff, it has more energy to focus on fixing itself. So it makes yeah. sense to me. Your, but... And your eyes will turn. Like I was shocked how, cause I have blue eyes and I used to get compliments on them uh until maybe the last 10 years and it's just interesting like i started getting compliments again and i noticed like that there is a more vibrancy in them and i've noticed fewer floaters on my eyes i've noticed like i mean i i go to the doctor and i think for the last few years now uh my prescription improves but anyway sorry i'm hijacking the conversation about my health i'm just saying those are two (laughs) things i want to do simply because if there's a frequency issue if this is connected to the web if this is going to be the zombie activation of all of the clock shots that took place over the last few years, because that's what a lot of people are talking about. And I don't, so I, I don't, I think... did want to actually comment on that. And yeah. we, I, the last time this happened, I, I don't know if we even mentioned it last time, but the last October time one of these 3rd, emergency alert things happened, it, I just turned off emergency alerts. And I know you were, you were kind of telling me about that in your message but um yeah. i turned them off and i never got it so i don't know if they worked a way around that i'm not yeah. personally this isn't any anybody else's opinion i'm personally not fucking worried about it at all i think it'll just be a little beep on your phone or whatever and then you carry on with your day but hey we'll see what happens after that but uh nate and yeah. thomas you guys jump in whenever you want by the way cut me off cut cut mitch off do whatever you want yeah please <laughs> Uh, first of all, Mitch, I've heard you on a bunch of different podcasts. This is the first time I've ever talked to you. I'm excited to talk to you, dude. I'm going to have to hook up with you after this. I'd love to have you on the show and talk about all this kooky, awesome, wonderful shit. Cause I want to know more. Of um, course. Yeah. And so this is really cool. Um, I've, the only thing that I've heard about this specifically is like, I got some boomer buddies that are like hardcore MAGA folks that are like slightly cutarded but they're like all <laughs> I like fucking China. worried about this and they've they've heard um like specifically i heard it, i thought it was october 4th that this was going down this this um, one is last time oh, okay. it, but there was a leap year between the last one which is why i think it's a day later and i i always think everything is a ritual at some point i mean everything's just rituals and data collection for what's going on in reality yeah, yeah. And, and so um but i know also that the phone the last time it happened i I had moved from just moved from chicago and we were we didn't have a home here in sedona yet so we were bouncing around at hotels and um there was a confirmation people had to click on the phone and that was the part that just bothered me it wasn't the frequency so much it was that you had to confirm that you got this message and every time you turn your phone back on it there you had to go about it a certain way. And so I wonder, Joe, in your case, maybe maybe you were even you had an older phone than even I had at the time, because I have kind of an ancient one these days. It's um, ancient I'm, by tech standards. I think I have an iPhone yeah. 11. So oh, see, and I, yeah. I, I think at the time I might have had a five and now I have an eight. And I'm so and of course, it's crack, crapping out and whatever. Um, but I am taking my I, everyone's like, I'm going to turn this off. And in the same case, like you say, Nate, I have some older friends that are, you know, they're all, I mean, they all are into watching the, I call it the sound of PSYOP movie, but the sound of freedom, they got into all that stuff. They get into the blue tarps and the space lasers and all this. And they think they know everything because it's like, basically the government's evil. I know everything end of subject and i'm like oh my god you're just getting started well once you know and about so, blue tarps and space lasers fucked, whatever. <laughs> you know everything at that point right it, well yeah i mean well because you think you figured it out and but i'm sure everybody in this group is clearly aware you you all well these idiots don't realize out. it's the red tarps that protect you not the blue tarps oh my god well that's again i mean yeah why why that color of all colors but so you basically you wake up and then you wake up and then you wake up again and you know and it's like i still find myself saying shit they fucking got me again like i fell for something no yeah and, and the more the more we learn about all this stuff the more you feel like the unknown unknowns are way bigger than you thought and you're like fuck i don't mm-hmm. know shit anymore yeah. And then you kind of even because I mean, I don't know for myself, I used to pretend I knew everything. I thought it was just throw organite around the tower and it was done. And now people ask me certain questions and I taper off and I'm like, you know, there's actually so much there's so many unknown variables of this because the, the reality in which we live is so screwed up and we have no idea. So but I want to avoid that um, confirmation thing 
if there is that again, because I do believe in the idea of this consent for all this crap. So like people say, turn your phone off and do this. I'm turning my phone off, but I'm also, you know, obviously no router. No, I live in a very low EMF area. I live in the village of Oak Creek outside of Sedona. So like I take an EMF meter around my house at night, we power off a lot of stuff and it's like a dead zone and it's amazing. Nice. But I will still, I will still have my phone uh, off settings, whatever the phone is off, the SIM card's taken out. I'll probably take out the battery because I've replaced that enough times to do it quickly because I just don't trust. I, I, all the technology can go to hell in my book. Like I do not trust anything about it. Um, and I do believe that technology is mind control technology, all of it. But as far as do I think there's something to worry about? I know I'm not personally worried about anything and i would imagine that everyone in this group tonight is also like nothing that's going to happen is going to affect anybody who's sitting here talking uh yeah it's just something in to any know, direct yeah. or indirect way yeah and yeah. i'm just glad you uh, had brought that up and texted me the other day because what started as kind of this you know the idea i think it, that's how you came up with this thought process is because of october 4th yeah, again, not worried about it. Who knows what could happen though? At this mm -hmm. point, I'll believe anything. So I mean, is there not believe like, anything. I, so I went into my settings today into notifications, and there's a way you can turn off. So in the government alerts section, you can turn off Amber alerts, emergency alerts, public safety alerts, and test alerts. There's like mm -hmm. a whole government alert section. So are you saying that they can get around that with this particular alert and it's going to bypass all of that, even if they're all turned off? Well, I, I mean, this is, of course, my opinion based on my own my own journey of crap. Yes, they can. But everyone, I mean, there's so many people that have been in the circle talking about all these different things that say, well, there's no way around this. And according to it's it's being conducted between, I think, FEMA and the FCC. And so but and between those two, I mean, they can ping oh, your FEMA. device where they're Fuck. Whether they want to or not, well, that's kind of weird. That's another can of worms. FEMA's up in Flagstaff right now, and we're having. It's amazing that the, for some reason wildfires only like to operate between nine a.m. and noon uh, for the last couple of days, and then all of a sudden they're gone. Um, but FEMA is dicking around up in Flagstaff right now. I think they're and Sedona just voted to break us apart into like nine districts, like fucking Hunger Games. So there's some shady shit going on. I think they're going to do to Sedona what they did to Lahaina, but that's my own mantra um well you better get that can, blue tarp out then well i know <laughs> mine's red um or purple is a purple mine's purple are we talking I, additive I, or subtractive color now <laughs> i no idea i i don't even know what to keep up with anymore i just bust towers so um, yeah I, I just live my life yeah. and just watch it yeah. slowly burn i don't yeah i don't think there's anything necessarily to uh worry about for a lot of people but I do think there are some people who should be aware of what's going on. I mean, really the, the dumbest of the dumb that, I mean, put your fucking stuff away, turn your phones off, sleep without Wi-Fi, sleep without this, get away from the EMF, get grounding, clean up, detox, all that shit. I mean, it's stuff that you should do every day anyway, but the fact that it's happening on 10, four and that everyone is already on high alert as it is. Um, and, and the fact that like, I mean, they have said it doesn't matter what you do. Like you can't, deactivate the alert which uh i know last time it took several attempts at turning the phone back on and getting this big box that was like this this display that made you have to confirm and i consent to receive and i'm just like i hate that word especially it's coming from the government and so i was like okay well this time it's like here's what we're doing aside from living in this bubble doing these little bodily protocols but then here's what we're doing with all the tech just because I'd rather be safe than uh, sorry, or I, you know, I'd rather whatever. I'd rather it'll the day will go by, and then we're also just keeping everything off for that day. I think it's supposed to go. I don't know what time it is. I have to check, but I think it's going to be around ten o'clock our time. Yeah, I thought it was Pacific mid morning or, some, or something. Something in the morning, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, and and then they also were going to do something if it, if it's not successful. They said they're going to retry it on October eleventh. What do they I mean, mean by successful? It, exactly. Well, why did Joe Biden use the term we're laser focused on helping Maui? I mean, because they know people are going to like fucking run with that shit. And then I'm over here trying to tell people it's not fucking space lasers. It's something else. But that's 
anyway. So yeah, what, so, what started this whole thing though is is that date. But I, what you were talking about after that or before that, I can't remember, was the uh, the idea of technology itself being this giant web, and you kind of touched mm -hmm. on the, a little bit, and the kind of like the web of like uh, frequency and energy that's kind of connecting yeah. people, so they say, but also technically mind controlling people. Well, actually, I have a question, I guess, for Nate and Tom uh, or Thomas. Or, do you go by Tom or Thomas? Sorry, I'm new. To Either one. All right. So as far as you guys, are you familiar with Emily Moyer? No. Okay. That sounds very familiar. Well, she's a, I mean, she's a, a podcaster who has, you know, she's got her show and I mean, she'll just, shit gets weird on the show as far as what you can dive into to talk about. And um, I think you guys would, any of you would have a heyday uh, talking to her. And we talk about some super weird stuff about reality. And she classifies herself as like a reality bender and just oh, trying to totally analyze had an interview with her. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. She's, she's awesome. And, uh, and she's a great way to like talk about things that maybe get uh, ignored just because you can't really always go there uh, with everybody, you know? And so we were talking about just even recently about reality and like being this web, this bubble that you, you sort of create the conditions. Like, I believe we live in a system I don't, I, you know, I can't get into any camps about the shapes of anything. And, and I, I understand the sensitivities of it's saying, a globe. We live in we'll a... just end it. It's a globe. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Globe so I, I like to think dog. of it. Well, tell you what, you guys might all be in the age bracket to make, for this to make sense. But when people ask me about what do you mean a system? Cause I'm of the mindset that like reality people, like I make my own reality and I'm like, okay, I, I understand all of that stuff, how people have all their, their, belief systems about all of everything um i like to think of it more like an experience like we control we create our experience within a reality so if we all turn on this don't sound stupid but if we all turn on teenage mutant ninja turtles the arcade game and jen's the only one that types b a b a up down b a left right b a start when we start playing she's obviously going to have a much more a, a much funner time playing the game because of what happens when you punch in that code. So I look at like this reality in that way, that it's the system that can be tapped into. And you are, because really, if you look at like, what makes what makes our life enjoyable? I'm not gonna lie. It, I know money is one of those things. Makes shit a lot easier. Doesn't matter what how you try to cut Money can buy booze. And money weed. can buy, it can, well, or money can buy the off grid that you wanna get the hell out and do whatever, you know, and it can, it can give you the money for the business to become sustainable and get us, you know, so it's like, there's this system. And within that system, I believe in, in my experience, I believe that uh, every single, uh, basically all these devices that create what I call the frequency fence that or harp, some people call it harp, but they confuse that with a facility. And I call harp a system that it's not in Alaska. It's the Apple watch on somebody's wrist. It's the smart meter on millions upon millions of people's homes. It's, it's the web. It's literally the, the grid and they call it's, it that. It's the grid. Exactly. And although of course the grid, some people would twist that and say, well, so like everything running through the ground, like the fiber optics. And I'm like, no, everything, the atmosphere being electrified, every radio tower, every cell tower, every single Tesla, sorry if anyone drives one, but Tesla, driving around a cell tower on wheels. So it makes up this web. And that web is essentially the pathway or the gateway in which all of the fake bullshit reality can be manipulated. And that's what, like, I, I look at this reality as like an artificial reality is trying to cast a shadow over nature or over what was maybe just here before, if there was a reset, you know, it's like, just, there's just, this happens. And then after a while we're long gone and like, and this happens and it just, and it all gets buried. And eventually you uncover skeletons physically, and then you uncover secrets metaphorically or whatever. So it's this system within this web. And I think, you know, I, I don't have all the answers to it, but I believe that that's how the Maui, it, it's one example of how things are manipulated. You can manipulate this reality. You can manipulate the elements within this reality. And that could include melting something directly into the, melting the car directly down into the ground and making things disintegrate or appear or disappear. And the interview Even I just did with the, Emily. It's so interconnected. Like they could cause a fire in one area just by kind of ramping yeah. up the activity in that area or something. Do you ever see the Hunger Games movie? I never read oh, the yeah. book. 
Uh, so I just, and I've never even seen the movie except for the scene, a few scenes. And one of those scenes though, is I saw in the forest, they manufacture fire and they manufacture, I think some wolves or something that chase after people. Jen, you're shaking your head. So obviously yeah, like- we've seen it. We watched them all like your kid. Like, I think, I think that was sort of, that's not the exact way I think that it would maybe happen, but I think there was a truth they were trying to describe. And the idea- you know, right now, if you went to Lahaina, all these areas are blocked off and they're not letting people look at stuff. And of course we get pictures. Everything we know about it is all through a screen. So we have to assume it's, we, we can't really assume anything. How do we even begin to assume what it is? You know, we can't even assume that Oprah's in on it, but that maybe she's got a gun to her head or some shit. Like, so all we know is what's through the box. Yeah. And the rock and was holding so it. I think, I think that maybe what might be hiding behind there is stuff we if we saw it we would possibly see stuff we've never even conceived before about how elements behave and it would then open up our ability to then make those things like once you know something's possible your mind just will run with everything and you start thinking more critically and analytically about everything and if you can prevent people from getting to that ability, like how did two gigantic skyscrapers literally turn into dust in 2001, then Death it's fuel, like, when obviously you, when you can, yeah, when you can start showing more of a connection of, well, what's, what is possible in like an alchemical sense or in a metaphysical sense, or in this weird scalar energy frequency fence type of sense, then all of a sudden people think beyond space lasers. So, and they don't think it's the government. They think it's something bigger control. And I'm, that's where I am. I'm like, fuck the government. The government's stupid. They didn't do this. There's something so much more grand that's pulling these strings. So, well, I mean, Biden's a perfect example of that. He's not running shit. He's just a little exactly. mar marionette. Something else is yeah. running his strings. Yeah. I lean, I, I, for the record, I, I lean fairly uh, conservative uh, because of my friend. Like, I mean, I no, I don't. I lean, in, I'm an individualist. I'm a freedom-loving individualist who believes humanity deserves to be free. There just happens to be one political party that, at least on paper, looks like that's what it cares about. None of the politicians do, but the people that fall in line with that are, and that's usually conservative, Republican, independent, whatever, freedom, people who appreciate freedom and individuality. Um, but yeah, the, the arguments of the political stuff is just, I'm like, I'm, I hate it. I hate it so much because I'm like, it's just fake. Everything's fucking fake. It's all fake. So yeah, I can't even stand the, the debates on social media anymore. And it's the Democrats. Yeah. Oh, you Trump loving fucking blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I just, just stop. No, it's all manufactured. Away. I even, we, we talked about this on the show a couple of times, but I was just in Massachusetts and all my, with my family and they're all vaccinated. And I talked to them about Biden and the vax, and they are all on the same page as me. They were like, well, I just took it because the TV basically told me to, or I just took it because I had to for my job and I didn't even want to. And I was actually super against vax mandates. And so were all of our friends. And then it just expanded out to where my whole family and basically everyone they know were all in the same camp as we were. Where we're I mean, some people were like, fuck that the vaccine's gonna kill you but like either way they were just like joe and i didn't know what the vaccine mm -hmm. was but we were just like i don't want to take it and my family did but they felt forced to and they did mm -hmm. have to we weren't we were in a position where we didn't necessarily have to but they were all just like yeah fuck that and biden's an idiot and i can't believe people voted for him i can't believe i voted for him not me but that's what they were saying so mm -hmm. it was pretty cool that most people are on the same page and the media just divides us into thinking that, oh, well, all of these people in this one area think a certain way. And these people in this other area think a certain way or everyone from California is a liberal. And it's just mm -hmm. not true. We're in California. Or so everyone from Texas is a gun toting redneck. That's also yeah. not true. But a lot of people agree with each other and just want to help each other out and don't want to be, you know, governed like that. And some people just do fall in line and that's okay too. That's their choice. And we have to be okay with that. Yeah. My general motto these days is you do you boo, leave me alone. Let me do me. Uh, Nate and Thomas, do you guys have anything, uh, any comments or uh, thoughts on these kind of ideas like the, the grid frequency type shit? Grid frequency type shit. I, in my head, after you guys were talking about 
uh, Oprah and The Rock, I was just thinking about like, I bet Oprah like forced The Rock to eat her pussy or something. I bet oh, she has like strong, like yeah. she has serious power, dude. Like, I bet she's like, oh. as soon as like, <laughs> as soon as you're like on her island, she has like full fucking power and force. Like, you got a dominatrix outfit on. I think South shit. Park should do an episode like that. I can totally picture a South Park making that happen. Oh my God. <laughs> the horrible things that The Rock went through. That's all I was thinking about. But sorry, that's where my ADHD goes. I was like over <laughs> here thinking about just, I'm not even going to say the things that went through my head. But oh, you should. Uh, yeah. This <laughs> but is the platform as far for as, that. <laughs> But as far as all this shit goes, too, yeah, I mean, it, it's it, there are people that don't want to be governed at all. You know, you're talking about people that want to, you know, just want to be governed or people that don't want to fucking be governed at all. And it's just this idea, too, where I think the majority of people do kind of think mostly the same, but it's like they force you into these two fucking camps. Like, is now you're, there's these folks like, I can't believe we ever voted for Joe Biden. But then you have this ghoulish monster, Donald Trump, on the other side that scares the living shit out of them. And so probably the majority of I'm sorry, your Maryland folks, they're probably going to fucking vote for Joe Biden again because they're so goddamn afraid of Donald Trump because of how the media has painted him and fucking made him this fucking evil, ghoulish monster. I mean, that's mean why people voted Twitter. for that dead douchebag in the first place. Right. You know, exactly. So they silly, were just voting you know? against Trump. They weren't really voting for Biden. At I all. basically had friends admit that to me that they were they weren't necessarily voting for Biden. They just weren't voting for Trump. And then you only get the other option. Pretty yeah. much. And so you're forced in these two camps of consent and they for like you're talking about they needing your consent and they make you feel like you have to vote. And it's fuck voting. Fuck no, yeah, that, I, I'm <laughs> fuck voting from now on. I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, but to, to speak to the uh way that they've divided us so completely and well just by thoughts i uh had posted on instagram this fucking video of biden saying another gaffe he's like changa kanga kawawa and I, nobody knows what i don't know what the fuck he's doing but uh i had one dude that got on there and was like you asshole trump supporters oh you, you just making fun of this guy just because you're dictator trump bobby you can rot in hell and, and i was like i just had a measured response back i'm like i didn't vote for trump not wanting this old, uh, you know, crazy white guy to be in charge of the free world is not the same as supporting Trump. Uh, I didn't vote for either of them. So thanks for but stopping when you by. Are forced in this two where there's only two categories, then you are like to them. Yeah. There's absolutely no alternative. If you are not like sucking the dick of this old pedophile, then you have to be a Trump supporter. Well, and it does work the other way too, where Trump supporters, if you know, if you have blue hair and you're, uh, I don't know what, uh, you know, whatever else they do, you obviously voted for Biden, and that's not always true, but yeah. Well, you guys, everything yeah, a lot now, of the times, everything is political at this point. I mean, like if you, when you hear somebody talk about the shot, you know which person they voted for. When you hear someone talking about pedophiles touching children in schools, you know which one they voted for. When you yeah. talk, like everything is so, and I mean, like I, I didn't, I, I will not vote. I re actually revoked my, my registration because I felt like that was actually a, a legal standing thing that I needed to do for myself. Um, so I don't have, so no one can say, you know, I'm basically saying I don't consent to the way that this system works and How anything else is, uh, you go and voter register you just go to your voter registration website and you revoke it and they'll I, I think there's a form you sign i did mine in illinois and so right now i'm not registered to vote anymore which also i'm pretty sure means you can't serve jury duty um, perfect which you can't i mean actually there's plenty of us out there that we will never have to for other reasons anyway but um i'll never it's just have a, to it's, it's a legal standing that you just put yourself, you know, I just figure I have a friend that actually goes and votes and she writes on the paper, this paper is your God and then signs and I don't consent to it and then signs it. And as long as the machine sucks it in, she considers that she's like, you've accepted my, my acknowledgement that, you know, this is your God. Is this also when you get pulled over and you're like, I'm not driving, I'm traveling. I mean, it's not the dick in the video on YouTube that I feel like that stuff just exists to scare people. But like if um, you don't roll your window down, they're not allowed yeah. to arrest you. Uh, no, like, I mean, they'll do whatever the hell they want. Like it's, they, it doesn't they will. Matter. So not boots allowed doesn't mean they're not going to fucking do it. Look at the government. They're not allowed yeah. to do a lot of shit. They, they do. Exactly. And they do it. These are people too. They're going to make bad choices and good choices. Some 
police officers are great and some are awful. I don't, they could absolutely punch that window in and drag you out if they want to. And then get fired you from their job like you never know it's gonna they can say they know know it's gonna happen yeah you can't predict that you can't say that just because they're a police officer they're going to follow the rules they yeah. should but they might but not it might be your unlucky day theory well just talk to anybody that has um any type of power any karen that has power sorry i shouldn't use that word it's no you um, should well you okay can. so any but anyone like that like you give someone a little bit of power and i'm actually dealing with that in my what I call my matrix job that's aside from the world, but it's just like the power struggle. Once you give somebody that little tiny taste, they go, they go insane. They go mad. And that's how you end up with. Look at assistant. Well, that's a also. shitty person though. That's a shitty person. Yeah. But I it's mean, also, had... I mean, but in, but I will say in fairness, cause I know a lot of Leo's who I've had Leo stop at my house that picked up copious boxes of earth pipes that they took back with them to California. People who worked in Newsom's office that no longer work there because they had to take the shot or leave and they left. But he needs um, one of them shoved up his ass. Well, he, he probably does. Of, he needs a lot of things. It probably does out of enjoyment. He probably but like it. Yeah. He, uh, but I've had people that stop by and do this stuff and it's like, they, you know, I know that they're not, they're not the psychos, but even they will admit that they're like, our demographic is bred for like, the system is you're you're basically you're an agent of the state you're like lawyers and you shouldn't trust lawyers either and that's a whole other can of worms never I think hire we can all agree with that though yeah you don't hire lawyers i think you guys have done episodes on that but once you do you're letting someone speak on your behalf and accept your guilt which but so it's like there are i know not everyone's bad it's just boots to me boots are boots and it's like if they're a cop or whatever it is they're doing they better be working for the better, like it better be obvious that they're helping their fellow humanity. And I know a lot of them are, probably are, and they have to be super quiet about it, but. Well, it scares me now because I know we always talk about kids these days and the zoomers and the whatever. Um, some of these kids are fucking cops now. Mm -hmm. you, you make fun of teenagers and shit. They're going to be cops in a couple years. I saw a cop the other day in my hometown that looked like he was 21. I'm like, holy fuck. We are. We're screwed if that generation is becoming law enforcement. <laughs> Fuck. It might be the only people willing to do it. It's like people willing to work for the IRS or the whoever, you know, I don't know. Well, dude, too. It's also like to me, like, what is a fucking cop? Because like, I think a cab includes a lot of people. Like I, <laughs> you know, I think about this Could sometimes. So it's like, it, like the way they turn people into fucking cops where they were like, Hey, like snitch on your snitch on your fucking dad that might have been at the fucking Capitol. It was at the Capitol on you know what I mean? Well they, now we're talking FBI. Yeah. Bad but boys. you know what I mean? Like let's say your fucking your uncle was at the fucking Capitol on July, whatever the fuck it was, January 6th. Like they literally were teaching people to be fucking snitches, be be like uh, like part of the fucking state, like where they it's that whole indoctrination of like you are the government, you are like like this is a people uh, like for the people, by the people, that sort of thing. And so it's this whole like delusion, like to me, the state is the biggest fucking delusion of it all. Like there is no such thing as a government. We're all just fucking people. But when you indoctrinate these people to feel like they're they are the state, they're doing the right thing by tattling on uncle, by talking about like what if their grandma says the n word because that's how she grew up, right? So you you blast out. Yeah. Get on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're doing your duty. It's just like you're doing your duty to roll up your sleeve. It's mm -hmm. like do your part to help you know, your fellow, part. Exactly. Oh, man. It's not for you it's for other people it's the exactly it's good. for grandma it's always for grandma if you oh, don't arrest grandma. these people grandma's gonna die so well mine are dead so i don't care uh nate what you're <laughs> saying though about the uh that it's not the government it's people it's the idea of government it's like the agrigor thing like that mm -hmm. If you guys heard of agrigores, like, there's like tulpas, which are thought forms, and the agrigores, which are like a massive tulpa on a huge scale. So if anybody wants to look into agrigores, that's kind of, I mean, there's a lot of agrigores out there. The that U.S. giant agrigore. That's yeah. what the government does, though. They create a giant agrigore and expand it out through the television or the radio or your, or your cell phone, whatever, and make everyone think that everyone thinks a certain way and they just naturally want to jump on board and then it just feeds the egregore and it grows. 
Terrence McKenna has a really good talk that if you just go on Google and search for culture is not your friend. Um, but that's, I mean, that's the premise. That's the whole premise is the title, but he's talking about how people get so wrapped up and, Oh, my culture. And, you know, like my family's family, and this is just part of us, but culture is really just a convenience. He calls it like a single serving, like nice retail package so that you know what to identify with and other people know what to help you identify with. So I kind of think the same way, just all the way up, right? Like cultures at a small level. And I and I, I guess, I don't know if I agree with everyone um, meant talking about the government. I don't think the government's stupid. I do think the government exists. I absolutely think it's an egregore, but I don't know if it's like some nefarious group sat down and they were like, ha ha ha, you know, we're going to set this egregore out and keep repeating it. I think that we just tend to always want some sort of authority just as humans and put up these big, you know, establishments to to put down this authority and that in itself becomes bigger than we are. Like the government, it's like the legal system, right? The legal system is going to outlive all of us and it's been a lo- around longer than any of our living family members and it's going to keep going around and it's going to keep living. And it doesn't matter what one person does or even an entire generation does to end it unless it's like a complete, you know, throw over of Rome. But even the empire of Rome itself was probably like an egregore right so if we're like that new version it's just like the egregore waking up and going back to sleep and waking up and going back to sleep so i I think it's going to outlive all of us but that also means it's way smarter than all of us yeah and that could be argued both ways too is whether an egregore is created on purpose or if it's just kind of a natural thing and that happens and there's people that know that they can use that to their benefit i could see that happening um, but what we were talking about culture is interesting because, yeah, I think culture is largely manufactured and created by wh- whoever you can name, whatever group you want. But uh, like I-, I heard somebody bring up like the decade thing, you know, how from like probably just this last century, how every decade had its own defining stuff. Like you can you can look at it from the 50s to the 60s, different shit, 60s to the 70s, different and all the way up. The only one that doesn't seem to have much of a cultural difference is this last decade. I don't really see anything besides like Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. But as far as like music style, all that stuff, it seems to, you know, if you say 80s style, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you say 90s style, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, do you know what I'm talking about? It's because the new style is politics. That's what everyone's focused on. the The culture war. I mean, I I know in 10 years, I'll look back at this decade and be like, oh, it's the decade of trannies. Well, oh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, everybody's fucking trans. It's, yeah, absolutely. Oh, no. I think there is, actually. I think you, we're just getting too old, and so we're not fucking recognizing it. But there's absolutely, like, I, and we are turning into the old people. Uh, no, there, there is fucking, there is a weird, like, there is a culture. And it is well, SoundCloud rap. Us. That's that's very yeah, SoundCloud rap. Early it's mumble rap, and... Xanax rap. It's like these, yeah. It's it's dog wait, shit. Wait, wait, Zone, SoundCloud old, rap to mumble rap, rap and now yeah. everything's trap. Like even like Taylor Swift is going out there and like stirring up coke and you know doing the things on the stage, right? Like that's kind of this this extra new wave is everything's going to be trap. Kind of how in the '90s everything was leaning towards like gangster rap. Like even you know, like Limp Biscuit would come out and it would sound kind of like gangster rapish, and Corn would do with uh, an album with Ice Cube that would have some gangster rap to it. But now it's like Martha's teaming up with Snoop Dogg, and you know, it's like the corporate, like the corporations are now blending with like the obscure stuff. So now it's like Martha Stewart's going to be cooking up that that crack with Raekwon on stage. You know what I mean? That's what I mean by created, not necessarily because it's uh, some evil overarching shit, which it could be. It's just corporate interest. It's money. Like, what makes money? Yeah. Oh, let's but do even that. if you look back at like some of the grunge shit or the fucking the rap music that we listen to, or like all of those things, it was it's all been corporate created. And you find and you find that like all this cultural fucking things, these phenomena, they're all manufactured and all been fucking fake. Well, and hey, hey, Barry Ash, right? Like Frank Zappa's dad was an intelligence. Jim Morrison's dad was an intelligence. Like you can just start checking them all off the list. And then if you can go deeper than that, like all the old like fairy tales and children's books that we all grew up with. Guess what? A lot of those dudes were all in intelligence. And that's why like you still read them to your kids. It's not because it had merit. It was just because 
they had connections to publishers and everyone bought it and became a seller. And just like we're talking about now, the TV tells you everything that you need to know. Well, back then it was like the popular well, book told, told everyone everything. know what your morals were going to be. Does, does anyone else like I, with all like the, I'm going to use the writer strike and all that stuff, which I think that's not authentic. I, I shouldn't say it's fake. I just, I don't believe there's any authenticity in it. I feel so being, bad for those Hollywood writers. I, so I, bad. I, I, I don't know where I would say what I would respond as far as that. I just think that, you know, the conversation has gone into this idea about AI and that, you know, AI writing scripts and, and doing the job that I think it's a distraction, by the way, because the, the strike happened before anyone knew the capabilities of well, all the latest chat GP, like, like that got, that got dovetailed in and it's like, and we're mad about this too, since we're already mad and everyone's here, there's this other thing called AI. But like a lot of the people were like, yeah, I think I'm mad too, but I'm kind of dumb. I don't really understand it. So I'll just well, like what he said, it's, it's the literal version of like this, you know, the, the people doing this thing, like, oh. well, I think, I think in the case of like, let's just say broad stroke, all entertainment. So music, movies, TV, everything. I, I actually personally, I believe that AI has been running the show on that for, a, for a very long time. Cause they're not going to tell you it's happening. They never tell you what's happening until after they've been doing it for a long time. And I have wondered in like, say the example of the deterioration of Hollywood, anyway, and look at any Disney movie, all the crap that comes out and like quality goes down and like things are few and far between as far as like quality versions of the entertainment and creativity and all of that. And it makes me wonder if uh, until these recent years, it's like all of these algorithmic processes have been put together by all the data collection of everything through our modern history. And now it's being expressed. And like, that's maybe that's what this decade will be or will be known as maybe in the future when we can look at it in hindsight. But I, I think like when I, I don't listen to music anymore because I, I, or if I do, it's 80s and 90s music and like selective stuff. But I have heard the music being produced lately, and especially when I hear like kids in the backyard or whatever in the neighborhood. Get off my lawn. And I'm like, I'm like, Jesus Christ, not even as an old guy. I'm just like, those are who the hell wrote this stuff? And, and in the case of the movies and like the quality of everything, I've wondered if it's actually sort of like it's a it's a test to see what passes and what doesn't and like when you get into these big wars about you know people will fight for fight for the the little mermaid being changed races or whatever and like that becomes a big hot topic and it's like everyone's focused on that instead and i'm sitting here thinking i think that in in addition to all these other things we see in the media and the tv movies whatever it's all being operated by something that's a sentient learning process that's not human in my eyes and that we were just we're just being tested like it's basically seeing like how dumb are they how like when we're just gonna and so now like i feel like that could be part of what the strike is that it's like we're getting ready for that the automation of everything else in human society why not why not the writers and the creators of of all of that stuff and maybe they're ready or they're like getting ready like they're just they're at a point it's like when i hear someone say oh they do all this stuff because like they're scrambling, meaning they, the, the evil people, uh, the powers that think they are, are doing all this stuff and they're tripping over themselves. And, and I hear people say, oh, they're just, they're um, slipping up because they're desperate. And I can understand why people say that. I, I, I can go and have that conversation, but I, in the back of my mind, I'm still reserving this room to say to myself, or what if they're just confident? Because they already know, because it's an algorithmic process that's already, they've already accounted for every possible scenario of how people are going to react about something that maybe they don't care that you see the mask fall off of Joe Biden or that he touches the kid or, or falls down the stairs on the Air Force One or what, well, I mean, I don't know. I just, shit's so bizarre. And I'm, and we all look at it and we're just like, Jesus Christ, like, what is this place? What's happening? I love right that now? idea. So that you're right. A hundred percent with just thinking about the fact that it could just be a test because mm -hmm. it, it could just be a test where they're like, what, how, how far can we go where people mm -hmm. will just let it go and still go on with their daily lives Yeah, where they'll see the mask fall off and then still just go to work the next day and not say a damn thing and then vote mm -hmm. for him in the next election. Yeah. 
Yeah. And people, look at what you were saying about that. Stuff. It, Easy. So with the right. algorithmic shit, um, what Thomas was saying about the writer's strike and all that. So I harp on this a lot, but every time a new, supposedly new technology comes out, like Chat GPT or the, all those apps where you can simulate somebody's voice or deep fakes and all that stuff, once we're allowed to have that, I assume it's been perfected behind the scenes for quite some time before that. They're not putting out a beta version. They're putting out, this is what you get to play with now because we've been doing this for a while. And have you so guys seen knows? the new Rick and Morty? Have oh. you guys listened to the trailer for Rick and Morty? Joe and I were just talking about this. I was just going this. there. Yeah. So, yeah, so they fired Justin Roiland because he was I'm accused charged. of assaulting his girlfriend a couple of years ago. He was not convicted. He's just accused. Um, I'm not saying he, he did or did it. it. Either way, like, whatever. <laughs> Either way, they fired him before he was convicted of something, which I think is super What TV funny. show did she write? That's all I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so either way, so they they replaced they replaced the voice of Rick and Morty, which was Justin Roiland. He did the voice of Rick and Morty for six seasons. It's been since 2013. Yeah, many so I think season is. seven just came out and the trailer just came out. So we listened to it and we read an article on it. And the article says they replaced Justin Roiland with a TikTok with a TikTok star. So I was like, oh, OK, cool. Let's listen. We listened to the trailer or the whatever. Yeah, the trailer of the new season sounds exactly like Rick and Morty. And it just clicked in my head. I was like, oh, it's fucking AI, like 100 percent indistinguishable. If you watch that show, it is wild yeah, how much it sounds like. <laughs> of course, they probably paid off a TikTok star who just wants to be famous. Be the face of it. Probably can do the voice. <laughs> A little bit. If he was tested, he could probably do it. But they're never going to record him in studio doing these voices because it's AI 100%. They've run Justin Roiland's voice through the simulation 100 times or with all of the episodes, the countless hundreds of episodes. And then they put out season seven. You can't even tell the difference. But then they pay off this TikTok star who knows how much to say that he's the new voice of Rick and Morty. And if anyone That's doubts my theory. The, the capability of the voice... Um replication that is out there now and this is just at the consumer level um my buddy murph shout out buddy he uh he listens to the show uh oh. we did a we recorded a song it's a cover of hanging by a moment by lifehouse and it's called hanging by a bed sheet the story of epstein so we'll release that on the show as soon as we get it done but so we recorded a take and we didn't have all the right equipment. So it was kind of wonky, sounded weird. And we're like, okay, let's regroup and like try to redo this. So he has his friend who's really smart with AI sample his voice from two different songs that Murph sang and then fed it into the algorithm and popped out what sounded exactly like my buddy Murph on a song that he never sang. It is crazy and he's saying the song he just didn't he's one of my best friends so exactly i know what his different. voice sounds like i know what he sounds like singing so to hear somebody that knows him that well listen to this song is like okay so is this why biden looks a little different every time they had a different algorithm or like does he sound a little different this time because they used 11 labs instead of somebody else like who fucking knows well, people in general will i mean we've been taught this as humans we'll see something and not notice a difference. If it's a slight difference, we don't notice it because we want homeostasis. We want to think that things are normal to Your us. Brain we don't off. want to notice the differences. If it's a big difference, we think it's a threat. So we'll, of course, notice that. But I think there's a part of us that is kind of stupid and that's maybe planted in us or just it's grown in us. I don't know what it is, but we will look at something and not necessarily notice little differences. And that's what, so if you've ever taken like an IQ test, an IQ test is not a test of intelligence. It's a test of potential because you're noticing differences in patterns in certain things. It's It doesn't really, you can't ha hold a conversation by taking this IQ test. Like it doesn't, it doesn't tell you how well you'll do in a job interview. It just tells you how well you'll notice a certain pattern of dots or whatever. And that's a lot of this, those qualities people don't have. We can't just basic pattern recognition. Yeah, That's we all don't. We just want to think that things are just whatever. This is kosher. This is normal. I'm just going to go about my day. Maybe the simulation is testing us to see how far, how stupid we are. Yeah. How do much you they think get away with? Do you think that pattern recognition? Because uh, I I think it's a quality humans have. Like I think humans are actually smart. I don't think everyone on Earth is a human, uh, but I I do think humans are smart, and I think humans are actually not inherently evil. 
Um, I don't think we are capable of the things that we're not, we're not, I don't believe we're capable of, of that type of dark and it's all influential and, and programmed or poisoned or it's whatever it's, it's this, wherever we are. But yeah. do you think, like, I like to think we may be genetic. I think we're genetically modified. I don't believe in human evolution. We're just, it's just one genetically modified reset over another. And at this point, we all definitely those, are. Look at your food. And we've lost food. those things. Yeah. So we're, we're losing, we're having IQ literally like bred out of us is what I wonder, you know? Well, yeah, IQ that's, originally that's was, was made to identify idiots. It was never made to identify smart people. They would give you an IQ test to figure out if you needed to be sterilized or not. That was like one of the OG versions of the IQ test. And if you look at the very first IQ test too, they had, they had really messed up questions on there. They would like go find a poor kid and show them a picture of like a badminton racket and be like, do you know what this is? And if you didn't know it was a birdie, then it was like, oh, you're too dumb to have kids. Sorry, snip, snip. But yeah, it really was, a, it was a, lot a cultural of, thing. Like how the hell is African-Americans were placed in remedial math classes because of that exact IQ test. Right. And and at a certain point, they were they were really using it to be like, OK, we'll give you X amount of money to sterilize yourself because, man, you're like you really screwed up on this test. But then you're to give it some like, well, to give it some legitimacy, um, you know, you didn't want to just go and take a test that was going to tell you if you're retarded or not. You want to take a test and be like, oh, you're your mommy's best boy. You're a bright one. Like you're extra special. You know what I mean? And it took on this extra sort of connotation. But that extra bit is what made people latch onto it, because now it's like I'm mommy's smart boy. Like this IQ test, there's something to this. You know, this is valid. And then it just gave it more pow firepower for the people that were like, oh, you're at the other end of the bell curve. Yeah, they should just like take your ovaries and take your, you know, your balls off because you don't know what a, a birdie is. What an idiot. You know what I mean? And I feel like there's that aspect. And then another one, we're reliving it now right? in the modern times where everyone's like, oh, AI and it's outsmarting us and it's getting so advanced. And I think I'm maybe just a cynic at heart and I am a little bit like of a, a misanthrope, but I, I feel like what's happening it's almost like inflation right people are like did you see you know that the house value on zillow bro i'm a millionaire now you know i bought this house for 200 now it's worth 800 man we're you know we're rich it's like you don't realize that that's not your house value going up that's all the money in the world value going down and it's just yeah. like swelling right and i feel like it's it's sort of that exact same concept but now it's a sink so it's not ai getting smarter it's us realizing oh the optic nerve can only process 0.03% of the visual spectrum. Maybe we don't know what's going on because we can't even see like 1% of the visible light. And then the same thing with like audio. Oh, wow. This, this AI voice sounds so convincing. How, how incredibly advanced is this? Well, I mean, the human hearing goes from what, like a hundred Hertz to like 20,000 Hertz or, 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 you know, like, I think it's like 50 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz that's not that complicated when you consider all the different frequencies that are outside that same band that we use constantly with like Wi-Fi and radio and infrared and microwave. Like we know about all this stuff that exists outside of our brains. So I, I don't know. I, I think at this point people get so fascinated, but it's almost like a kid seeing something shiny, like, Oh my God, you know, have you seen this technology? And it's like, yeah, bro. It's like the light is reflecting in a spoon right now. It's, it's impressive, but just because it's like making all your your optic nerves fire and it's overwhelming you and making you feel a certain way doesn't mean that all it's i know is the advanced. deep fakes are so good i can watch aoc get dp'd right now so <laughs> <laughs> so what i and what i was uh, talking about with the it, it's not that it's so amazing i think it's more of what mitch was saying too is that we're just getting dumber by the day and well, it's not, you're, it's not easier everybody. to impress people no, no, no. But it's I don't want to insult every human. I just I but I think something's being changed to where we don't recognize those patterns, problems, or whatever makes us uh want to be responsible. I imagine everyone here is pretty responsible for themselves, and that's why you are well, I'm but you take care of yourself. I hear you guys talk about your kids and your family, and like you want I, I just think it's interesting that as re personal responsibility goes way down or the desire for it goes way down, the government authority and the problems in the world goes way up. And so it's like, I think those patterns and, you know, it's like, 
how do you know when you're in danger, your intuition, intuition, intuitions being probably bred out of us as well. Cause our intuition should be telling us, Jesus Christ, there's a lot of shit wrong in the world. And, it, and some people, they still think it's 2019 and everything's fine. Yeah, and what I meant by uh, the amazing uh, AI replication is that there's a clear difference between today's AI voice replication and Stephen fucking Hawking from like 15 years ago. So it's gone through the roof as far as that ability. If he had that shit back in the day, he'd probably be getting laid even more than he already he did. Faking it, dude. Yeah, he was probably. Yeah. But I, I just want to mention the same the same way that like digital cameras and digital audio and all these things they start to supersede our ability of senses right like once the fidelity of a recording can surpass what we're able to hear it's like it it takes over and i think the next step is ai is now doing pattern recognition something that computers have not been able to do without people and just like every other you know sort of our one of our senses or one of our skills or abilities technology ends up being way better at us than it and up until this last decade, most people are like, well, it'll never be able to recognize patterns the way that I can. And now it's like, actually, you know, I've just recognized like 20 billion patterns that are outside your, you know, your sensory range. A quarter of a tell. second. Like, yeah. Right. And like, yeah. And it's, it's crazy because that's kind of how AI works. It works in this weird magical black box where like the, like the funny old story where the old person's knee starts to swell and like, ah, it's going to rain in three and a half days. You know what I mean? Like this weird <laughs> language of the birds, but the AI algorithm really does see that. It's like, Oh, a bird, you know, died three miles away. And then like a cat sneezed and then like a Brown truck hit, you know, like a, like a, a blue car. And that means that the price of Microsoft stock is going to be at this, at this date. Like, and it can see these weird connections that to us would just sound, you know, nonsensical, but that's because, a typical human being, I think, if you're decent, you can keep seven different things in your active conscious mind. I think it goes up to around like 13, but beyond some, beyond like the double digits, there's not like a human being on the planet uh, outside of a tiny little, you know, like niche of weird rain men. But the, like, you can't keep more than 20 things on mind and keep it all straight, let alone a hundred, let alone a thousand, let alone 10,000. And when we talk about like GPT-4, these things are like, uh, they, they range them in, in the amount of billions of parameters. And you can consider a parameter like a thing that's on your mind, right? So imagine something that's got like 40 billion things on its mind and can keep them straight. And it can recognize the patterns, and the relationships and the ratios between those 40 billion things. I mean, there's not a there's not a person on earth that will ever be able to compete with that type of recognition. The only thing we've got left is that intuition that Mitch was talking about where like, we might not have to run it through the checker and double check it and the bug checker and then like see if the math is correct. If you just know, hey, I got this feeling and you act on it. Although on, on that same breath, say we're also stupid. Like you get on a roller coaster because you're intentionally suppressing that same instinct of your body. Like get the hell out of here, man. You know what I mean? But that's the fun part. So we train ourselves to not only actively ignore it, but like actively work against it for fun. Do you guys remember right. when, in, I think in the UK, they banned, what was it going? They were trying to like ban memes a few years back. Um, or it was like, they were trying to the cite. EU. And it was, they it were was, using copyright. To, yeah, it was, they, they were using that as the yeah. excuse. It's, copyright. Yeah, exactly. But my, my personal, I was just like, the more I thought about it, I was like, memes we all have seen plenty of stuff and it's funny and we've all i mean we've all posted them and i i use them to convey a message and they include emotion they include humor and i thought what if they just want to ban memes because ai can't find context hidden with it you can send a message to people with just a picture and you can get a point across that two human beings can can do and this robotic or whatever, it's not a good word for it, but whatever it is, I just, it made me wonder if that's one reason you would want to go after memes because they're a fantastic way of educating because anytime you can make someone laugh about a situation, even if it's uncomfortable and shitty, like they learn something about it or they think, huh, you have a really good point. And so um, that just, yeah, made me wonder about how the AI communicates and 
you know, that it, do you it think can't that the feel AI would, Do you think, so are you saying that a human or that an AI was trying to ban memes? Like, do you think at the end of the day- The, the government was trying to government, ban- Because of memes. AI. No, they were using the, on the paper, what they would tell you is we're doing this because taking me, like most memes involve copywritten material or trademarked emblems or, and yeah, pictures and, and all that stuff. So we can say like, we're doing it for the safety of content creators and the original whatever's who own, own those, those patents or trademarks or whatever copyrights. And so that's your excuse. But in reality, I'm like, what if, I mean, we can use memes to send messages to each other and, oh, so the government's trick. using AI to try to figure out. I what mean, us, we could yeah. use it to our benefit. I mean, maybe they do too, but we're human and we can, but we can the government's understand trying content. to prevent us from, yeah, from sending Be, messages. Being able to send messages in class, yeah. basically. Yeah. So it's just a thought. I'm not saying that is, I'm just, it, if the, if the machine can't, or this, if the Borg can't understand humor and I actually, on my Instagram, like I, I don't have um, my, my thing is, uh, you have to click to follow me and it's just helped me re reduce I, thousands of bots. It's just nothing but bots. And so I will go through and verify if every, if a person is a human and if I can't verify enough to be like, yes, this is clearly a human being that wanted to follow me. Um, I just tell people they can bypass that, like send me a joke. And so people will, and I get some funny things and I get jokes that aren't funny at all in a way they're all actually funny because of that. But like, they're like, mm -hmm. trust me, I'm a robot. I'm not a robot or whatever, but it's like, it starts a dialogue and we, Send me a human message, something a human, a human say. message, yeah. not like the bots no. that we get that are like, hello, dear. How are you today? They all yeah. fucking start like that. And I'm like, I just sent him a picture of Beavis back and I'm like, uh, hey, yeah. yeah. Okay, what are you going to say hey, to that? They're like, where are you, you know. from? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Well, you Dude, guys, honestly, Twitter is the fucking worst, man. The, the I'm amount not on of Twitter. like message requests that I get from like people asking me to join the Illuminati or uh <laughs> oh i got one of those before yeah <laughs> so dumb that's the dumbest i mean as far as a bot goes that's probably the most retarded thing you could do like unless somebody that they're messaging is more retarded and we might be at that point i don't know but you guys before we close out of here is there any other things you guys want to squeeze in before we close well, I was just getting like how my brain gets stuck on things i was i was still thinking about stephen hawking's i think that he was I love the idea that he actually what well okay what if he was full on retarded right he was like something happened to him he's all fucked up but we had the idea that he was a goddamn super genius and so he wasn't even in charge of his talk box like he was just a fucking goob stuck in a fucking rolling chair that they controlled he was like on a remote control he's and on Bluetooth. Yeah, they could use him to say any fucking smart thing they wanted like to me like that's how they could pass these like messages that they wanted and this is coming from a super genius meanwhile he's just like drooling he's just hey, shitting himself mm -hmm. we can say that's that because awesome. he's dead did you just Thanks. call yourself a super genius nate maybe no <laughs> i and i guess to parting this is on a random tangent but another thing that mitch was mentioned before of like how money makes things easier and to me, i i see money as just concentrated energy it's like mm -hmm. if you could take the work of an entire town and take that and put it in your pocket and bring it to another town, you can get that new town to do just as much work as the first town did. It's just a transfer of that energy. So of course, and right back to what Nate was mentioning about uh, Oprah forcing the rock to eat her out. I mean, if you've got the concentrated energy, like what what's a more powerful direct energy weapon than money, right? If you've got that, that Oprah billionaire, you know, money pile, you can direct that energy and make it do anything you want in some regards. And that's not just in like a tongue in cheek way. It's like a, in a very literal silent weapons for quiet wars. You look at society as like a, like a circuit board, Meyer Rothschild style. Dude, I bet she has a clit, like a beer can and it's jet black. <laughs> oh, every, every oh dollar God. bill and every transaction in the world has a code in it. And I mean, you know, anyone who goes into numerology, like, I wouldn't be surprised if all money just has a code in it that is like a spell in and of itself. So like, because they say like, it's not the, the, I think they say the Bible, is it that they say money, people think it's money is the root of all evil, but it's not. Money, it's yeah. the love of money is the root of all evil. And if that's not the Bible, sorry. Um, but I think I, it is. Yeah, I just know it is the, the love Bible. of 
Yeah. The love of money. Well, good. I learned one thing. Yeah. So you know, I, eight years of Catholic school. I love this uh, and, and hate this. Uh, Thomas, who was that son of a bitch? Uh, uh, they named a country after him. Oh, uh, Rhodes. Rhodesia. Cecil yeah, Rhodes. Rhodesia. What was his first name, Thomas? Cecil. Cecil. There you go. That son of a bitch. So I love thinking about this as far as like money goes and and just like power and consolidation. I, I think about this a lot. So I, I did a little research on Cecil Rhodes and his dilemma when he went to like South Africa and he was buying these like uh, precious mineral, like diamond mines and things down there. Um, he would see all these people uh, like the locals that were living down there, the tribes, people and stuff. They were fucking happy. They owned their property. They had their farms. They had their families. They didn't have money. They didn't need fucking money. They grew what they had. They had what they needed. And so he was trying to convince these people to come and work on his fucking mind. And he was trying to figure out how to do this. And so he was trying to incorporate them into the money system. He needed them to need money so that they would work for him. And so what he started doing was like using taxes and he started like basically like taxing people for like doing just uh, just about like existing. And so all of a sudden they needed to pay these taxes. So then they needed this to have this money. And so then he was able to like, like basically force them. It's almost like a weird, like, uh, like, like money slavery, basically, and force these people to work in his minds. And so, like you were talking about how money is a fucking spell. It is kind of a fucking spell. And it is like, and it's almost, I mean, it is like you're talking about Thomas money is fucking energy. You're forcing these people to, I mean, we're, we work every single day. I, I give up fucking 13 hours of my day for what? For this fucking money. So then I can fucking pay my goddamn taxes to pedophiles like on your t-shirt mitch i wondered if anyone would see that <laughs> i love it yeah it's all a goddamn spell it's all a goddamn aggregor and it fucking sucks was that yeah. a marty frank t-shirt what's it? no i just it just says you are here paying taxes to pedophiles with the galaxy and an arrow pointing to it's stolen i didn't i did not invent this i just stole it off I, of I a meme I've, actually yeah, I mean, yes i think so, i've seen yeah <laughs> well you yeah, guys I was bored during mean, covid i stole memes and put them on shirts so uh we all did i mean nobody's above that well thomas and nate uh where can we find you again before we get out of here Realities are is you can follow us on Rockfin. You can listen to us on Spotify, any of that fun stuff. Uh, let's see. You can again send me hate mail, love mail. Uh, I love emails from listeners. I go and get beers with my listeners. If you live within an hour of Portland, I'll come grab a beer with you. Uh, so hit me up, realities are at gmail.com and all that fun stuff. And Thomas has his own amazing things that he can plug through yeah. paranoidamerican.com. Yeah, you already got it. ParanoidAmerican.com. I'm trying my best to do podcast stuff. I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what an RSS feed setup looks like yet, but I'll get there. But Rockfin, Rumble, YouTube for the, the neutered versions of all of the above. Uh, go check me out on Amazon. We were talking about Morgellons disease and chemtrails and stuff earlier. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person on the planet that's put out a full-length children's book on chemtrails that you can get on Amazon until they take it off and when nice. enough people report it uh you know that's always fun nice. and then also we're talking about ai i think i'm also the first person to release not one but two jeffrey epstein ai models i've got a huma abedin ai model i've got a hunter uh, biden ai model they're all free and you can get them on civitai.com c-i-v-i-t-a-i.com and that nice. basically it's just a site where you can get all sorts of free models and and workflows and stuff. I'm not like I don't make money from it or anything. I just want for there to be a very reliable, high quality Jeffrey Epstein model out there so you can make your memes. I, I also released a, a John Podesta. So if you go on there and look, you can see like a John Podesta evil satanic pizza monster. And it's literally his face like melting and turning into a piece of pizza. And this oh is God. what AI is here for, I think. <laughs> for our pleasure. And Mitch, where can we find you? Um, you guys can find me at my website, theorgondonor.com. That's orgone, not organ. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm not posting as much these days on social media, but I've, I've been just very busy building those big, the big lawn ornaments and just putting those all over the desert and keep an eye out. Anyone who's interested, just keep an eye out for Arizona's winter. Um, 
because mark my words, it's going to be a frigid fucking bitch and snowy and completely unusual. And it's going to be great. So, oh, yeah. Well, climate yeah. change, obviously, it's going to be like that. You know, this all that global warming, man. So. I paid carbon credit, so I don't have to deal with it. Oh, oh good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Now I can dirty more. <laughs> so, yeah. If you pay more money, you know, the weather gets better. Everybody knows that too. Well, I just assume since he paid, it's, I believe in socialism. Since he paid it, I'm going to go ahead and, and dirty off well, more. And I believe in capitalism. So. And while water's so cheap, <laughs> I just let it run all the time and waste as much as I can because it's <laughs> never going to be this cheap again. Well, and the cool part about 2023 is you can just identify as somebody who bought a bunch of carbon credits, so it'll be fine for you. <laughs> That's true. That's what I'm going to tell the IRS next year. I'm pretty sure I paid my taxes. You can't tell me I didn't because I believe that. I'm not driving. Yeah. I'm traveling. <laughs> thanks for coming. I appreciate you, uh, Mitch. Thanks for coming on last minute. We'd love uh, to get that message you had about October 4th out. So uh, if anybody wants to contact us, I never plug our own shit. It's weird. But you know where to listen to us, obviously, if you're listening to it. Uh, you can go on Telegram. That's free. It's always popping off. Also, Zach, Hotep Zach, if you're out there, please hit me up, dude. He's been missing for like a month and a half. It's crazy. All right, guys. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs>